Some folks say that these days we're now living in a microwave society. Between email and text and Twitter, it seems like we've got less patience than ever. But one of the winningest trainers at Keeneland has that quality by the bucket full. And he shows us now that there's no school like the old school. When morning breaks at Keeneland, George R. Rusty Arnold II is just a few furlongs from the place where he grew up. But it's literally thousands of miles from where he began as a young boy who loved horses and loved Keeneland. It's because I started here. I, I grew up just a few miles from here. My father's farm was a few miles from here. And I started coming on weekends with him when I was in high school and, and piddling around the barn in the, uh, on, on Saturdays and Sundays. And now more than 30 years later, Rusty Arnold is still one of the sport's most successful trainers. And he's done so staying true to his old school roots. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's probably accurate. I, I haven't come into the tech world, uh, maybe somewhat, but, but not uh, dove in it like a lot of people have. Uh, but yeah, probably old school for the fact that I do things the way I used to do, and I, I didn't change much through the years, I don't think. One of the reasons Arnold has been able to stay old school is because of what he believes is a series of long runs with major clients something that is most unusual in this day of quick fixes. Mr. Greathouse, the Greathouse family, put a lot of trust in me early when I was young. And uh, I'm very proud of the fact that it's, I'm working for my third generation of them now. Those who know Arnold well will tell you that one of his biggest attributes is his quiet, unassuming way. That means he's not afraid to listen to the advice of others. Most specifically, a young Cincinnati girl who got her start in the business working for Arnold. I really loved the uh, the way Rusty ran his, his barn and I loved his, his patience with the horses and I was very comfortable from the get-go. Sarah began walking hots and then chased her dream of becoming a jockey but these days she's the second set of eyes and ears that helps Arnold keep his 60 horse stable on track. She'll be on the front side of the racetrack see things that I didn't see see something happen over there make a suggestion and Ultimately, it's my decision what to do, but I get an extra set of eyes watching horses, see how they act, see something that maybe I didn't see. A funny thing happened on the way to the winter circle, though. Rusty and Sarah found they had a love for more than just horses, and they were married in 1996, something neither of them saw coming. Not really. When I first started working with Rusty, I, also, I mean, I was so focused on just getting to where I wanted to be. We just had so much in common with the goal of, of training these horses and being successful with them and doing the right thing by them. Now, before you get the wrong idea, this isn't just some mom and pop operation. Only three trainers have won more than 200 races at Keeneland. D. Wayne Lucas, Bill Mott, and Arnold. He is proud and he likes to, I think he likes to have the validation, you know, and, um, but he, one of those people that wants his horses to, to talk for him. And as you might imagine, Keeneland holds a special place in Arnold's heart. For 24 straight years, with the exception of one meet in which he had no entries, Arnold has saddled at least one winner each and every meet. And the thrill of going to that Keeneland winner's circle never gets old. The traditions there, the people that uh, that trained here, when, when I won a, a, a training title here one time, it broke Ben Jones's record. And, uh, you know, you start thinking of the people like that, and that record's been long broke since then. but. You start thinking about the people that trained here before you, and it's, it's the traditions here, and, and, and I, I like the tradition.